Yeah, right. Okay, great. So I am very sorry that you need to endure me another 40 minutes. Uh, but I didn't have time last time to tell you what happens in the EV days. And this is a little bit unfortunate because we have already had some EV day talks, I mean, Kitai material talks. So I will just try to tell you what are those spin one half objects that are in the iridium compounds. And possibly, if I have time, I will also highlight what is the origin of the Kitai mod coupling. For that, I am not so sure. So I, I cannot guarantee you a logical conclusion of my talks, but you will still hear some interesting things. So let's start. And just to remind you, when did we stop the last time? Um, we were talking about the d orbitals. Now, the d orbitals, they were in a crystal field. And that crystal field was the cubic crystal field. And it can originate either if, and these are the most usual cases, that we have a magnetic ion in the center of an octahedron, or if we have a magnetic ion in the center of a tetrahedron. Uh, so let's try to see how it looks like. So I will try now to draw an octahedron. This is a cube. And these are the centers of the sides. Here, here, there, and here. So let me use some different colors for the octahedron. Okay, and this we don't really see. Okay. And we can call this side of the cube the Z. We can call this side of the cube X, and then this will be Y here. I don't claim that this is a left or light, uh, you know, handed cube. And the orbitals that I showed last time, they were like, and probably, okay, let's do use this notation, YZ, XZ, and XY. You see the order is such that here, the X is missing, Y is missing, Z is missing. And then we have, <coughs> excuse me, then you have two more. Those are the x square minus y square and the three r square minus z square. So those are the five orbitals. And this we called T2g orbitals. And this we called EG orbitals. Let's figure out how does the momentum, the, the, the orbital momentum operator x on this state. So the Lx is something we can write i times z dy minus i y dz. Is this notation clear? So what we do, that we, this dy means a differential, I mean, this dy means that we differentiate with respect to y, okay? Good, yes. And then we can write the Ly, that is i times x dz minus i z dx. And there is the Lz, which is just i y dx minus i x dy. Excellent. And this is the basis. So let's see how do we act with this operator, orbital operators on this basis. Clearly, the whole wave function is not only this part, it needs to go to zero when we go to infinity. So there is always a part which is a function of the radial distance that multiplies these uh, 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 polynomials here. We don't need to care about those because if this would have like, I mean, suppose that we have some function of fr, and if we apply any of this function, any of these operators to the fr, it will give zero simply because the r is, or r square is x square plus y square plus z square. And if you act, for example, with the lx to the r square, then it will give us 
uh, the dy will act on this part, so it will be iz y two times, and it will, no, yeah, two times. And it will act also on the z square, the last, the dy, but there is a minus sign, so it will be minus two i y z. So if we apply this dz, you, you, see, you see what I'm doing. And for example, dx applied to x is equal to one, and uh, dx applied to x square, it will be two x. So if we apply it to the quadratic, quadratic part, it will just uh, give the x here if we apply it to x square. So, so this is what I was doing here. And here it cancels out, so it is zero. So if we apply this operator to some polynomial, that is, say, uh, some polynomial of x, y, z, this would describe the, the crystal field part, and there is an fr, then it will just be uh, fr, I mean, if we apply by uh, terms, so we just use the rules of the differentiation, First, we apply Lx to Fr, it is zero, and then we apply Lx to P, and then this will be the result. So we don't need to care about the radial distribution, really. So let's try to see what are the matrix elements when we apply the Lx and Yes? Is any Sorry? Uh. No, no, it's just a polynomial, like x, y, y, z, and so on. So next yes. time, is the, there is a question, please, the microphone. All right, and I will add a few more states that you are familiar with. I will add the p state. Those are the x, y, z. These are the p orbitals. Uh, my apologies, I don't know what to write. Probably maybe there are t2. U, U, I, I don't know what, what they are, but it's maybe not so important. So we have those wave functions. Let's see how the X and Y and Z acts on them. So this, these are the P orbitals. And I'm writing now here, YZ, XZ, YX, XY, and one half X square minus Y square, and uh, one over square root 12, two z square minus y square minus x square. So what is the difference with respect to that? That here I included these factors and this factor will properly normalize the wave function. Okay, now let's, happen, let's see what happens if we apply the LX operators. The LX operator, when it acts on the x l x operator there is no x depend no derivative with respect to x so this will give zero if we apply the l x to y l x l x applied to y l x applied to y this i can use this dy to eat the y and if we make a z so this will be i times z now apply it to this guy, the z will be eaten by the dz, and the y will survive with a minus sign, so this is minus i y. We continue here, we apply the lx to this operator, and what it comes out, it will be, and now I am reading it from my notes, z square minus y square minus i x y, because the LX operator had a dy, dz, which will change this z into y, but it didn't, it didn't have a dx. So I think you'll get the idea how it works. If you, have, if you don't get it, please tell me, then I will try to go slower, okay? Good. Here we will have i, z, x. This guy will be minus i, z, y. And this will be, 1 over square root of 12 times minus 2i zy minus 4i 
y z. There are two additional rows to fill. So this will be minus i z zero i x. There is a reason why we are doing this. Minus i x zero. This is this row. Then here plus i x y. I mean, if you don't want to write this, this will be anywhere on the YouTube. So you can always go back and write it from the screen. I hope that I will have all the coefficients correct. It's very difficult to do an erratum in YouTube. This is minus i z y. Yeah, I said y, I, y square minus x square like this. And here, I said x to I, x, y. Here, zero, and here, square root of three, I, x, z. Good, so this is the table. Now let's try to read off from this table, what is the matrix representation of the L operators on this basis? So if we ask how the Lx looks like, the Lx is the following. It's a five by five matrix. The first three columns and rows, they are the T2G orbitals. The next two are the EG orbitals. So Lx will look like 0, 0, 0. There will be an i here, minus i here, 0, 0, 0, 0. See? Lx, it will talk to between, I mean, the y will talk to z, and z will talk to y. Sorry. Um, xz is talking to xy, xy is talking to xz. These are these i's here. Then we have the, 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 the eg. I mean, uh, the, the matrix elements to EG us, it's minus I minus square root of three I. Then there are zero, 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 zero. And if, I mean, it's usually good practice to do the calculation and then check if the, uh, the, 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 the hermeticity is uh, there, because if, if, if we have like a plus sign or minus sign here, and it is not emission, this matrix, it means that we made some error. So just doing all the matrix elements separately, it takes double so much time, but uh, the error that we make, uh, it's very easy to make an error in the sign. Okay, so this is the LX operator. The LY operator will be very similar except that the, the non-zero elements will be here at, at, the, at, at the corners. Then again, we have the EG part, minus I, I square root of three, zero, 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 and zero, I minus I square root of three, zero, 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 and here zeros, and there is the LZ as well. Two i here, minus two i here, and all the others are zeros. Okay. Good. Let us also write the corresponding l x l y l z orbitals in the for the p orbitals for the x y z orbitals. If we do that, the l and I may maybe maybe I put here a d and here a p, meaning that this is for the p orbitals. We can read off that these matrices will be the following. It will be a three by three matrix, and it will be zero, 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 zero. And there is a sign difference here. So it will be minus i, zero, i, zero. Ly, 
is equal to zero, zero, i, zero, 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 minus i, zero, zero, okay? And the LZ of P, it will be zero, minus i, zero, i, zero, 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 zero. Okay. It doesn't matter. Which one? Okay, good. We have an online audience, so please use. Yeah, yeah. Please use the mic. Right, so, uh, let's try to compare. What did we get here? Uh, we have these three by three matrices, which look almost like the x, the orbital momentum acting on p, except that there is a minus change. Uh, we may ask, do these matrices satisfy the Lie algebra? So what we need to ask is that if Lx, Ly as a matrices, do they satisfy the i times Lz? This is the commutation relations for the L operators. And if we plug in these five by five matrices into this here, and they are the corresponding ones, it will turn out, yes, they do satisfy the SU2 algebra. We may ask, do these operators also satisfy the SU2 algebra for the PE? Yes, they will also satisfy it. Perfect, so these are representations of the SU2 Lie algebra. This is a five dimensional one. This is a three dimensional one. But uh, what happens if the crystal field is very large and the EG, ob the EG orbitals are at very high energy level and we don't mix to them because it costs a lot of energy. In that case, we have different matrices. It's almost like those that satisfy the SU2 algebra but not quite right. There is a minus sign with respect to each other. How can we heal this minus sign? What happens is that if we restrict our orbital operators to the T2G part, it will be a three by three matrix. And I will put here T2G, then LX, LY, T2G, commutation will be minus I times LZ, T2G. How to heal this? What we can do is simply don't call this, the Alice operator, but it's negative sign. So we can just add here minus sign, minus sign, and then it will be plus here and like this. So the minus LXT2G will satisfy the SU2 algebra. It means that if we have some complicated expression involving different operators of, of maybe P orbitals or another orbitals, and we make a rotation in the O3 space, the rotation will be a proper or correct rotation in the space if the LX components are with the, the T2G are with the minus one sign. So this is, and, and this is the so-called L equal minus one state of the T2G orbitals. For example, if you would like to ask what is the Zeeman splitting in this case, so the Zeeman splitting is usually written as a G factor of the electron times the spin plus G factor of the orbital times L. And if we are interested, and this electron, uh, G factor of the electron is usually two. There are some corrections in the very high digit. And if we have this LT to G orbitals, we change the sign and we just write the G orbital at, and there is a, a T to G orbital, say this is acting with some H alpha. This is the alpha, alpha index of the magnetic field then I will write it this way. So I change the sign, and then since we know how the magnetic field is transforming in SO3, uh, uh, in, in SO3 or O3 rotations, this guy have, is having precisely the same, 
transformation properties. But after we included this minus sign into the operators there. So we can we know how to work now in the P2G basis. Uh, you see that there are no matrix elements in the EG part. This is the orbital quenching. The EG orbitals do not respond to magnetic field. Uh, there is an interaction between the T2G and EG orbitals. Uh, another way to check what is, what, are, what is the spin representation is that you take these matrices and you do the Lx square or Lx dot Lx matrix representation plus Ly dot Ly plus Lz dot Lz. And if you do this for the five by five matrices, what you will get is a identity matrix, or ident I mean a diagonal matrix with six in all of the diagonals. So it means that this is a representation for, for, for an L equal two, because, the, because the, this is the Casimir operator, the S square or L square, and it has eigenvalues L times L plus one, and six is just two times, this is just L times L plus one equal six in this case. Okay, good. So, and, and we can ask the same question for the three by three part. It will be just a diagonal matrix of two, a three by three matrix with diagonals equal as with two. And it means also that L is equal to one. Perfect. Do you have any question at this point? Yes? Please wait, the microphone is coming. In the commutation for Lx2 to T2G and Ly T2G, uh, you said we are changing a sign. Yes. So we should change it only for one of Lx or Ly, right? If no, we no, change no, it no. for all, both. All, all. You change for all. You have three commutation relations that I didn't write, and you need to change for all three else. But what I'm saying is, if we change Lx to minus Lx yes. and Ly to minus yes. Ly, L then, Lz to minus Ly, Lz. Yeah. So then, the commutator of Lx and Ly would be the same as the commutator of minus Lx and minus Ly, right? Yes, that is right. So that's why we need to change the sign of all three. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that makes Correct. sense. Very Thank good. you. Very good. Right, so this is where we stand now. Uh, is there anything that I'm missing at this point? Right. Okay, so let's try to guess, to, to see what are the iridium orbitals. So I just, okay. We don't need this anymore. We don't need this anymore. I mean, you have it in your notebook. We don't need any more of this. Uh, right. So, the Hamiltonian of the iridium ion uh, is, uh, is uh, yeah, 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 yeah. where is it? It may be from here. Right. Uh, we have, I mean, there is a, uh, there is a crystal field splitting, and uh, uh, usually the crystal field is delta crystal field, delta crystal field, and uh, now I am in trouble. 
Ay, 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 I don't know who is above, who is below. The usual problem that I had earlier. Okay, the, okay, this will be below. This will be minus three over five delta crystal field. This is two fifth crystal field. So these are the crystal field energies here. Okay. Uh, usually, yeah. minus two five minus three fifth. Uh, the convention is that the trace of the crystal electric field is zero. Here we have three orbitals. Here we have two orbitals. Three times two is six. Two times three is six. So the, the trace of the crystal electric field part is zero. So these are the, this is the splitting. If we turn on the crystal field, there will be, I mean, this energy will go slower than this energy, the crystal field, right? Then we have the, uh, yeah, okay, right? So we have the minus two over five, that uh, crystal field, if we have T2G orbitals, okay, I, I'm writing just the T2G orbitals here, and no, no, let, let's, okay, so if we have N T2G, sorry, I mean slightly trouble, and 3 over 5 delta crystal field if we have EG orbitals, and there is the lambda spin orbit coupling, which is expressed by S dot L. Now this L is the five by five matrix. If we are interested in the T2G part, what we need to do is just to change this L to the effective in one uh, Hamiltonian with uh, uh, the properties that we discussed. So T2G part, the energy will be minus two over five delta crystal field minus lambda spin orbit s dot l and this l is now acting on the t2g space so this is the spin one half spin operator and this is the l operator that is acting on l2tg and if you wish we, those are uh, the, 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 the the differentiation one i have still 10 minutes so uh, here we have an l that is essentially one or minus one and we have an s that is equal to one half what are the possible multiplets we can get so we need to add a spin one half and a spin one object we can get uh, j that is three half or j that is equal to one half i put here some effective okay right uh, how can we get those states uh, the easiest way is that if we have a j, say, 3 half, j is equal 3 half, and we apply the j plus raising operator to this state, it shall annihilate this state. So let's try to do that way to try to figure out what are the wave functions. So the j plus effective is just uh, sx plus i times sy minus lx the t2g part minus i times l t2g y and this i can rewrite as s plus you see we have the minus sign here as the s plus and here in this part we write the these operators here but when we add them we will only keep the part that is belonging to the t2g manifold the x y y z x z and we will leave out the x square and y squares and z squares because they belong to the eg manifold so and if we do that then we will get plus x plus i y dz minus z times dx plus i 
dy. Okay, so this is the j plus effective raising operator. Okay, so let's try to act with this guy onto the yz state. j plus effective acting on the yz up state. Now it will give me, or you, x, y, up. So if this is an up spin, the S plus can't act. So only the orbital part is acting. And we know that if we apply the orbital part in the T2G space, it will give us x, y. So this is the effect of the J plus when we apply it to the yz. We can also apply it to the xz orbital with the up spin. And again, if we apply the orbital part, it will generate the x square and it will generate the z square. But what we are interested in is the xy term. It will be plus y i times xy up. So we are working in the T2G basis. And this is how the J effective plus when we apply to the different uh, space, when we have the orbital and the spring as well. Uh, we are looking for the J effective free half, free half state. So this is J effective and this is J effective Z. So this is the highest way state. If we apply the J effective plus to this highest way state, it shall give zero. What is the linear combination of these two guys that will give zero? So if I add to this guy, the y times this guy, it will get the y here. Sorry, the minus y times, then it will be minus y, x, y, and plus y, and they will cancel. So we can essentially read off that the free half, free half wave function is equal to one over square root of two, yz up plus i times xz up. So this is the j effective wave function that has these quantum numbers, okay? Now, yeah. Thank you. Uh, if we add jf on x, y, uh, xz, uh, sorry, yz down, for instance, do we do we get a superposition of, of states? Yes. Okay. Yes. That, that yes. Is... yes. Yes. Hmm? Right. Please wait. Yeah. Right. Okay. Oh, I will. Right. Right. I hope. Yeah. We will get there. But I have. Okay. So, uh, yes. Uh, you, you know what you need to do. Because if it will be down, then you apply the orbital part and then you apply the spin part next to it. Uh, we can figure out then. Uh, how to get the other components in this multiplet. The simplest way is that if we apply the J minus effective to this three half, three half, it will give us a state that is proportional to three half, one half. So we, once we have the so-called highest weight state, then applying the lowering operator, we can generate the other states in that multiplet. There will be something here that is not important right now. If you do this, then you will get that the three half, one half is equal to minus two third xy up plus i, I over square root of six xz down plus one over square root of six yz down. So this is the component that is having a jz effective equal one half. Uh, we have here uh, the j effective three half, so we know how to make them. This is still missing. So this guy shall be orthogonal to this one here. Let's try to write it down. It will be, I mean, you, you know how to play now with these states. And you can figure out that if you look at this state, one over square root of three, x, y up plus i times over square root of three, 
xz down plus 1 over square root of 3 yz down that if you apply the raising operator to that state, it will annihilate it. So this is indeed the highest rate state. And you can convince yourself that it belongs to the J effective uh, one half spin state. So this is one of the upspins, spin one half like objects in the Vitaev iridium problem. And the other guy, it's Kremes pair, is just minus one over square root of three x y down minus i times square root of three x z up plus one over square root of three y z up. Right. So the degrees of freedom in the Kitai materials are these guys. They are Kramers. They, they make a Kramers doublet. If we apply a time reversal operation to this wave function, we will get the lower one. Why? Because if we apply the time reversal to the upspin, it will say give us minus downspin, and the downspin will become upspin. So this is how you apply the time reversal. It's anti-rotary operator. So if we apply the time reversal, the up will become a downspin with a minus sign. This is okay. If we apply here, the down will become up, and we need to complex conjugate, plus a complex conjugation that will change the sign of this i to minus i. This is also fine. Here, this is purely uh, real. There's no complex conjugation, but the down will become up. Down will become up with the same sign. So these are indeed time reversal pairs, Kramer's doublet. OK. Uh, then, since Ludomis wants to talk now next to me, you can check, you can put these wave functions. I mean, you, you can check what is the crystal structure of the Kitaev materials. They are octahedra, I mean, they make a honeycomb out of edge sharing octahedra. And then you may check that, okay, so let's have that. It's, it's complicated and it, it would take much more than. 10 minutes, so I'm not doing that. You can put that edge sharing tetrahedra next to each other, and you can ask that if I have a state in this electron in this state, can it hop to this guy? And you will see that it can't. So because of the oxygen, the hopping is via the 3D orbitals, the, the, the oxygen p orbitals, and the 3D orbital on the neighboring octahedron, and these matrix elements will be zero between these states. So it cannot visit the neighbor. What it can do is that it can visit it once we include the J effective it will three half states. And then it will make a state that is excited by the spring orbit value of the spring orbit coupling and it will come back. And this interaction is kind of an easing like interaction and that will generate the easing the, the X, X, I mean like the, the key type coupling between say the jz jz and jx jx or jy jy okay i think i stop now here and ludo is the next one so let's thank uh, carlo for this very pedagogical tutorial are there any questions from the audience here yeah there's one Uh, so I wanted to ask what uh, I couldn't follow. How did you write the three by two, three by two, uh, this thing as uh, I by root two, why is that up that term? Yes, yeah, so question, your question is why did I write this Yes, here? yes. Okay, so what we did here, or maybe there is something missing still, J plus effective, if we apply it to the, no, XZ, YZ, what, what was missing, XY up, and then I'm in a little bit trouble. I don't know what to write here very quickly. I think the okay, you have also this guy. And then you try to figure out, but this is enough. Okay. So you, you try to figure out what state, how do I need to combine these two so that if I apply to the J plus to that state, it gives zero. Because usually the how how do the spin multiplet work? So what, what, what I mean, the, 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 the spin multiplet, say we have the 
five-dimensional representation of the of the, of the L equal two. So the L equal to five dimensional representation, you will have like five half, and then the LZ is five half, and then you have the five half and the sorry, three half, and so on, down to five half minus five half. So this is your spin components, five, five components in the, spin, the, the basis, the spin, uh, the, the the basis of the five dimensional L equal to subspace. And then you have the operators that act, you know how the, how the spin operators or the orbital operators act on these states. So you have the rules that JZ apply to five half and we have the uh, LZ apply to this guy and we have some value of LZ that is I don't know, some beta, it will give you beta times five half beta. So this beta is equal to five half, three half, and so on. This is, this, this, these are these numbers. And to go walk between these states, you use the L plus and L minus operators. And, and you know that this Hilbert space is finite. It has maximum five elements. And with the LY, you can start from here and you, you can walk down. But the L plus, if you apply the raising operator to the state that is the, has the highest LZ, and the L plus wants to raise it, it cannot raise because it, there is no other space anymore. So what we need to find is that what are those states that if we apply the L plus or J plus or S plus to that state gives zero. And once we found them, they will produce the so-called highest weight states, and from there we are done, we know what to do. So what I was doing here, that I was checking what is the linear combination that if we add these two states will give me zero. So I was just, we can just multiply, like said, we multiply this by y, okay, I, I'm multiplying it here, i, and then this will be minus one, and I know that if I add the two states now, if we add them together, this will be zero. And here we have J plus effective acting on YZ up minus plus I times XZ up. No. Yeah, yeah, you, you can't. I mean, you, you, you have some, 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 some coefficient here, some other coefficient here. To get zero, this is the only solution. Okay, since we are running behind the schedule, I guess if there are any urgent questions, maybe from the online audience. If not, let's uh, thank Carlo once more. Thank you very much.